got it tacked up. And if you get too close, you're getting cracked up. So cold when I roll, coming out of the hole. Get back, cause I'm out of control. I'm on the edge. Welcome to season four, Lucas Oil on the Edge. Great new set, great new look, and some great new events coming your way. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about all kinds of stuff with women. That's right, not softball, not roller derby. I'm talking about Diva Metal Mayhem, women's demolition derby. If you think guys are crazy, wait till you see 18 of the craziest women out there in the country doing it right up demolition derby. And the only guy that can hang with these women is my buddy, Ken Stout. Lugs, well, nice to have you with us this year, and I'd like to say thanks, but I'm not real sure that's the correct word because these are some angry, angry women. Welcome to the Diva Metal Mayhem, presented by General Tire. We're in Oregon, Illinois, and we're about to turn these ladies loose on each other. But first, let's go to Bryce Cooper. Here at Lucas Oil on the Edge, we brought you Demolition Derby before, but today we're going to bring it to you with a bit of a twist. We've got nine angry ladies from Iowa and nine very motivated ones from Illinois here to let it all hang out in a nine versus nine team women's demolition derby. Now, they're not only here to show the men that they belong on this dirt just like anybody else, they're here to beat up on each other and give us a good show. Um, Illinois thinks they're going to take us girls down from Iowa, but we're here to prove to them that the Iowa girls are going to take the Illinois girls down. They better make sure they brought enough. What's on the line? <laughs> Turf. Illinois has got a drive on there they call Derby Chick who thinks she knows everything about derbies and she just started opening up her mouth and well, I was here to shut for her. Oh, it was not started with that, with us. It was started with them. They started talking smack about us on the internet and so we just figured they were going to start it, we were going to finish it. And we're just here to let her know that she's not that good. They better hang on. Why's we're that? bringing all we got. We're here to show Casey, Derby Chick, that, well, her mouth is bigger than what she thinks it is. Well, I'm going to be on them like flies on. That's all I know. We're here to shut her up. Her and the whole team. Well, they better watch their big, because we're going to kick it all the way across the track. We are just getting started in Lucas Oil on the Edge. Don't even think about changing that channel. We'll be right back. Illinois for the Diva Metal Mayhem presented by General Tire. Ken Stout with you, and the only guy crazy enough to join me at this event, Ted Brunson. Welcome, my friend. Uh, it's good to be here, um, I think, Ken. And you know, I am crazy enough because I've been known to uh, upset a few women here and there. So, well, what, what's that saying? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorn or a woman in a car in a demolition dirt. <laughs> and the green flag's out. Let's go, buddy. They obviously very angry at each other, and a lot of teamwork will take place here. But I, I love the the angel wings on top of the cars. Yeah, and it's quite a dichotomy because we know these girls are not exactly sweet and angelic, at least when they're out here in the pit. This is your typical county fair type of demolition derby. We've seen demolition team derby before racing, but this is going back to the grass or dirt routes of Demolition Derby. And of course, you've got Iowa versus Illinois. These girls were seriously talking some trash, Ken. Yeah, they were very angry at each other before the start of this. And this isn't like a powder puff Demolition Derby. I mean, this is the real deal. The Derby Queen, you can see, has worked her way inside there. So some tough competitors. The cars have been prepped. They didn't give them a whole lot of area right off the bat to keep them slowed down. But take a look at the power plants of some of these things. Well, I'll tell you, you see a couple of big spitting headers right there, but all she's doing is uh, basically hitting her own teammate. I think she needs to readjust her, her strategy there, Ken. <laughs> I see some big iron in here, too, some old Pontiac, some old Chevrolet Caprices. So there's some tough metal inside here. And right off the bat, somebody takes a hard hit right there in the radiator, and that's what you want to do. Try to take that radiator out if you can. Well, you see Nikki Perrine right there in the 83. She is on Team Illinois. Angie Cole here, 357 for Iowa, trying to find their places, Ken, trying to figure out what's going on. The team colors, of course, Illinois in the red and yellow, and Iowa in the purple, or as you call it, periwinkle. There you go. Peri periwinkle is a beautiful color. Yes. Kim Ritberger, you see her right there in front of you with a number 11 car. That car looks like it's been through a couple of demolition derbies already. Yeah, that's not in too good a shape, but maybe it's crunched up just the way she needs. Now, there's a big hit right there by Dar Belden. And another big hit. It looks like I was taking charge right now early on. You think so? I mean, those Charlie's Angels are hanging tough. Well, they've got someone else as their co-pilot. Just going for the hard door hits, the hard radiator hits, trying to create a little bit of room here. 
And there's you know, a lot of reinforcement there in Shelly Boland's car, right? You can see the, uh, the extra steel and the extra bumper right there protecting those two headers. And Candy Summers trying to find reverse. It looked like it was the number 111 with the BAM chicks out of Iowa. That's all part of the deal, Ted. Obviously, he's keeping your equipment going. The transmissions take a huge hit. Thankfully, they're all running that Lucas Oil transmission fix. That'll keep them alive, no doubt. You're also going to need that uh, Lucas Oil power steering stop leak because they're turning that <laughs> wheel so much. The hood completely gone on that car. I love some of the ingenuity. You take a look at some of the headers out there. I mean, it's just amazing what they come up with. Vicki Orson, part of Charlie's Angels, of course. Nice, hard hit in the left front there. Driving that big Oldsmobile looks like me there, Ken. And, you know, the strategy for this type of demolition derby is to use as much of the, oh. Look at that, just a big just pile up. Just use as much as the, the rear end of the car as you can do. As, as you said, you really want to save that engine. Your tranny can go in a heartbeat. These cars are so durable, believe it or not. I mean, they've really supported them in the proper areas, and that's why so many of them are hanging on for so long. Well, it's flat out good old American steel that they use here, Ken. They go to junkyards and they grab a nice frame that's in good shape. They throw an engine in there. They reinforce it with some steel bars, and they're ready to go. Good old American fun. Look at the stands. I mean, this place is packed. Standing room only, in fact, as we watch Shelly just drive in there like a woman possessed. And I would think it's safe oh, to say, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Dar's gone crazy. Nice <laughs> solid hit right there <laughs> by Dar Belt, and she just came across and just hit the Illinoisan right in the side. The number 355 in there making a little bit of damage right now as well. Actually, I think it's 357, Angie Cole. 287, Mandy Fry. Mandy Fry, look at the back of that car. Mandy, well, her car is fried. It looks like a frying pan. Sure does. Sarah Q in the number 21 for Charlie's Angels. I think you're just afraid to say Queckborner. Sarah Queckborner. Uh, well, you might be right. I like Sarah Q better. Do you? <laughs> April McKim is uh, looking to find a way to get around and stop getting hit because she's been getting pummeled lately with a back tire. You're in the wrong sport if you don't want to get hit. Nobody's steering clear of that out here today. And Sarah Queckborner is hanging tough. She is, and the car seems to be in fairly decent shape right now. Most of these cars. I like that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> The left rear about to come off. Oh, and there's a telltale sign right there. Mickey will have problems hanging on to the end of this event. After she loses all that fluid, that thing will overheat. It looks like they're going to red flag the event here, so everybody will come to a stop. But the event is not over, so come on back. Hi, I'm Bea Garrett. This January. You've seen them in the movies. Now I get to hang out with them on new episodes. Ted Brunson along with you, and of course, Bryce Cooper down there, standing scary close to the action. So tell me a little bit about what happened out of there. I saw a red flag, and I saw you jump out of the car. The gas tank come unwelded from the back and come forward. Now was, so gas was spilling all over. Now was your gas all in the cockpit everywhere with you? Just in the back. Just in the back of the car. Back of the car. Now, your team's out there right now doing battle with these other girls. Is it the action that you were expecting, or is it getting a little bit more intense? Oh, no, they're going to kick some butt, let me tell you, because Mopar yeah, Express is out there to put on a show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bryson. If there's one thing you need to know, Ken, you cannot have your gas tank come unwelded, because that would mean what? Of course, they have to stop the event. It actually is a pretty scary situation, obviously, with the gas leaking out of the cars. And talk about a hard hit up and completely over. And again, they were red flagged this event. Candy Summers does the rollover, courtesy of Nikki Perrine. Now, Nikki didn't look like she was doing too well earlier, but she gets the hit of the day so far. Look at that. Man, talk about handing one out. Yeah, she just caught that car at the right spot. You know, she did, I don't even know how much she really did because she got a little bit of help from the Iowa. You know, it's, it's kind of like it was a it was an Illinois sandwich. I mean, Nikki was in between. She ended up flipping the other car over. They're trying to actually drive the 83 car off. Mickey Perrine and does get down off of that car, so they'll see if they can get it rolled back over and uprighted. Car number 111, Candy Summers on her lid. And she appears to be okay. I mean, nobody seems real concerned about uh, if she's well or not, so she's probably coming all out in one piece. But take a look at this again, Ken, and 
just kind of a, a strange situation. I mean, the back end of Perrine's car just catches Summers and flips her over like nothing. Yeah, it was like the 44 and the 83. So actually, Parr and Miki got together. And unfortunately for car number 111, Candy <laughs> Summers, she got kind of the double whammy, if you will. I tell you what, it's uh, it's not summer season right now. There you go, the number 355. and That's April McKim. She's waiting on the restart, Ken, and very anxiously waiting. You mentioned earlier in the show that these are some angry ladies. You are absolutely correct. They have vengeance on their mind. They do not like each other. The green flag flies, and there's a perfect example of it as they all stand in the throttle and try to take out their opponents as quickly as possible. Oh, a lot of steam out of the number 316 over there. That's Buffy Myers. You're going to see, I mean, that, I find that actually kind of funny, a girl named Buffy at a demolition derby, but I guess we shouldn't stereotype names. But they're really, if there is any type of strategy, it's we mentioned that you need to, you know, use the rear end of your car to do a lot of the ramming with. But other than that, I think it's just lay down on the gas and go nuts. And number 287 still holding tough. Mandy Fry, a little contact with the number 21 there, Charlie's Angels. But right now, we're just seeing these ladies trying to get position. There you mentioned all that steam coming out. Some, someone's car overheated, probably the one we saw with all the antifreeze pouring out of it. There's Nikki Harris, unable to get things going right now. She's stalled. A lot of your transmissions at this point. Oh, she's back. Oh, man. And she's speaking coming of, back fast. Speaking of transmissions, she just revved it up, flat-footed it, and threw it in gear. Yeah, and that's not going to keep it lasting long. That is so tough on the equipment. and. You can see they're starting to get in a little trouble now. Another red flag, it looks like. That's three red flags. Will we have any more before this thing finishes? Well, the red flags are for safety conditions, and we don't want anybody hurt out here. Come on back. Let's find our winner. Well, all of these ladies are on the edge. The Diva Metal Mayhem in Oregon, Illinois, presented by General Dyer. And the restart after the third red flag has begun. You saw Nikki Perrine was trying to back up. She, she was still connected to uh, to Fry's car. So you had uh, Illinois and Iowa cars connected, but not exactly through love. Trying to get a handle on it. If anybody has a real advantage, yet, there's still a lot of vehicles running. And April McKim still trying to position herself. We haven't seen that big hit. Yes, we saw a rollover, but not that big from one end of the track to the other where they completely just smash into each other. You know what's really cool about these events? They come out, you see a lot of them at fairs, but they're family events. You know, mom, dad, the kids come out. The kids love to watch stuff like this. Everybody just has a great time. It makes a good memory. And another great part of that, Ken, is the families get involved as far as the whole event with the cars. I mean, the ladies out here, no doubt their husbands, their fathers, their moms, everybody's kind of helped them put this thing together as well. Well, you can see Mickey Perrine breaking that stick off the side of the car, off the post there, and that means that she is done. Once you break that off, you're done. You're out of competition. There's some nice collision right there. Car number 316, Buffy Myers. She's still handling things pretty well. And Mickey Shoot having her fair share of problems. Looks like she's trying to get it going one more time and manages to refire that thing. Oh, now we're getting some speed. The 355 of April McKim starting to hand out the hits. April McKim has been all over this track, Ken. She is, she's a headhunter right now. I'd watch out for her. Of course, it's the last car running is the victor. Not only is it a personal victory, but it's a team victory as well. State line bragging rights going on. Sitting right there in the middle, you know, just like a sitting duck, if you will. You sit up there very long, they're just gonna hit you whether you're running or not. The 333, Angie Auburn still making a good run here for the Iowa team. Purple and yellow, Iowa, red and yellow, Illinois. Now there's some question as to whether that, well, I guess that car still is running, the stick is not broken off. But you see, and it's hard to tell which car that is because the number's off it, but I'm almost positive that that could be Fry's car. When you hit a car standing still, you're a subject to be disqualified. Well, Vicky Shoot was sitting there right in the middle as well for Charlie's Angels or Team Illinois, whatever you'd like to call them. Mickey Harris still trying to make a run. Looks like she's getting a little frustrated. Maybe that one's done. Caught between a rock and a hard place or a car and a hard place. She can go nowhere right now. Once again, the 355, April. Oh, oh and April is just going crazy. She might single-handedly win this thing. 
Mickey Harris with a 24. She is the last hope for Team Illinois. And Charlie's angle. She's saying, wow. don't hit me, don't hit me. But guess what? That doesn't work so well with these guys. You've got to break the stick off if you're done. And she's trying to restart. Well, she's trying to keep, stay in this game for Team Illinois. And that's why she has not broken her stick. But this car has taken so much abuse. And what great teamwork, by the way, by Iowa. Actually, one of the Iowa cars that are pinned against the guardrail, and the other two just beat her into submission. And that's it, Ken. She broke off her stick. Nikki Harris was the last one standing for Illinois. And that means the winner is Iowa. Man, what a battle between the ladies, the BAM chicks, the winners coming from Iowa. They got it done. They were talking to Smack earlier, and they brought the Smack home. All right, let's go back to luck. That's who's safe and sound in the studio. Well, so much for all that trash talking from our girls from Illinois. The Iowa ladies still on the track while every single one of our Illinois girls out. In fact, one of them's parked right behind me now. So we're going to find out which one of those Iowa girls doesn't mind taking out her sister. Well, it was Candy, Dar, and Buffy who were the three that were still running for Team Iowa when they won the competition. But now it's for individual bragging rights. Well, it's the sisterhood of the mangled metal going on right now. They, they won together, but now they're facing off. You know what? No such thing as camaraderie when it's time for an individual title. And look at the strong hit. <laughs> These girls are not holding anything back, Ken. Buffy Myers, she drove like a woman possessed in the team competition, and I watch out for her right now. Oh, she got that thing going just quick enough to not take a huge hit from the number 44 in Dar Belden. Okay, we've got Dar and Candy just kind of hanging back, kind of staying away from Buffy as she drives all over the place. We haven't heard much from Candy Summers at all. Expect her to maybe sneak up for a huge hit. Well, this late in the competition, it becomes very difficult to steer the vehicles. I mean, take a look at the front fenders, the buffers, everything jammed into the steering tires, so it makes it difficult to aim that thing exactly where you want it to go. That kind of looks like uh, your car if you try to parallel park in the city of Chicago. It looks like my car now. Yeah. <laughs> Candy Summers in there, she's still fighting hard and delivers a hard hit to car number 316, Buffy Myers. I'll tell you one thing's for sure, Ken, I can guarantee this, no matter how good of shape these women may be in, they are going to be very sore tomorrow. And now Dar Belden sitting there, kind of waiting for her to break the stick off. She does not look like she's in good shape right now. Yeah, a lot of steam out of that one, and they're all starting to struggle. Buffy Myers has finally slowed down. She can't get it in gear. You've got that transmission problem. You can only take so many hits, switch it from reverse into drive, you name it. We might be down to just one. Candy Summers might be able to hang. Oh, and the 44 moves just a little bit. And that movement might be just enough to keep her in the hunt for the championship. And now they're locked up, literally, and no one's going anywhere at this point. It's kind of a battle of attrition. Hey, do you know of a wacky motorsport event or something not usually seen on TV? Then we want to know about it. Log on to NewWaveTV.com and let us hear about it. While you're there, check out our official Lucas Oil on the Edge merchandise. T-shirts, hats, polos, cool stuff. Check it out. Well, we've been watching the Diva Metal Mayhem here on Lucas Oil on the Edge, presented by General Tire. Let's go back down to Bryce. It's all down to this. Two cars left. There's a lot of dead soldiers out here. We've got Dar Stevenson and Candy Summers, who was earlier involved in a complete rollover, which signaled a red flag. So it shows a little bit of determination, a little bit of luck. Might be the last woman standing in this all-out action female demolition derby. The final two are going at it. And I'm pretty impressed here because I really thought Dar was almost out of this deal, and she's really come back to life. She's got some spunk left in her right now, I'll tell you that, Ken. I mean, they were locked up, didn't even know if they were going to get separated. They were separated with some assistance, and now they're hooked up again. Yeah, Dar Belden appeared to be dead in the mud, like you said. But Candy, she's just not giving up at all, and that car is completely cashed. <laughs> Can you imagine, you know, if you had a car like that and you had to get somewhere, it would never run, and this thing just won't stop. No, they just won't stop. They're, they're relentless, these two. These, these girls were teammates, as we mentioned, and they won for the state of Iowa. But now, do you, do you think they still like each other, Ken? Because I'm getting a feeling they really don't right now. Well, I, I don't think they do right now. No. Maybe, who knows? Maybe they're giggling at each other, kind of laughing, like, I'm going to give you another shot here. And I thought they both stopped there for a moment. But again, the 44 of Dar Belden looks like she's in trouble trying to get that thing refired. She's got a lot of smoke pouring out of there, a lot of fire coming out of the header. And, uh, yeah, she did have trouble starting up before. And if hey, she... 
It looked like the neutral safety switch wasn't necessarily working when she restarted that car. You think that might be the case? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Dar's definitely having some problems here. This thing's going to get called in just a moment, and it looks like Candy might have the upper hand. Well, and she's having a hard time even steering that thing. She's trying to get one last blow, one big hit, and uh, you can see that she can't keep the tire straight, and that is the final, though. The stick has been broken, and Candy Summers is the winner. How ironic is that? The one that got turned over, car sitting on top of her, and she ends up winning the entire event. Well, that's just the way I think, as Bryce said, you know, a little bit of luck, and you can do a lot in these things. There, there were some good hits today, Ken. It was a lot of fun to watch, and you didn't even stop and think for a while that these are all women. And they dished out some lickings right there, man. Some big time hits and roll candy completely over, but she's the winner, and Bryce is standing with her. Candy, at one point, this demolition derby was literally upside down. That was you in that car. Yes, it was. I was upside down. Well, it looks like you've turned things around, literally. How's it feel to be crowned female demolition derby champion? It feels great. It feels, feels great. I love it. Now, what about this Illinois rivalry? How'd that go for you? We can but... <laughs> I got... <laughs> well, she's, she's having a good time, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, she's wow. going in the mud. Okay, now we're wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you log on to speedtv.com to see where the official Madison International RV cameras will be next. For Bryce Cooper and Ted Brunson, I'm Ken Stout. And remember, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space.